Not adopting a rental model will likely limit use of EOS to those who are willing to speculate on EOS price. Bold words from Dan Larimer at the conclusion of his latest rental model proposal. Welcome to EOS Weekly, your number one source of EOS news. Today is Wednesday, August 8th, and the title of this week's episode is Rex and SEOs, the yin and yang of EOS. So let's get into this week's update, starting with headlines. On August 2nd, Dan Larimer published a blog post titled Proposal for EOS Resource Renting and Rent Distribution. Dan had been bouncing ideas around in the Telegram chats in the weeks prior to this post regarding introduction of CPU and net markets. This would be similar to the existing RAM market. So we are expecting a post like this with some sort of proposal by the ByteMaster. Before we get into his proposal, let's back up and understand what the underlying problem is that Mr. Larimer is trying to solve. The first thing to understand here is that there are two main personas that the EOS ecosystem needs to cater to. And those two personas are EOS token holders and DAP developers. We need to draw both of these types of users into EOS and keep both of them happy. If the design of EOS is off balance, causing the incentives to be too far skewed towards one of these personas over the other, it would be detrimental to the ecosystem as a whole and neither persona would benefit. So let's look at what each of these personas want. EOS token holders are involved with EOS as an investment. In short, they want to make money. DApp developers want to build things on top of EOS. They want to have access to the blockchain and they need resources, namely RAM, CPU, and bandwidth, bandwidth which we also call NET, N-E-T. And they want all of this at, a, at an affordable rate. So far with the current design at the time of the EOS launch, neither of these personas is getting what they want out of EOS. The holders are not making money, and the cost of resources on the EOS network have been prohibitively high for most DAP developers. What Dan Larimer realized when he put his mind to this problem was that having a single EOS token could not satisfy both of the use cases for our two personas. This is why he introduced Rex and SEOs. The Rex token is specifically geared towards the EOS token holder, the investor, while SEOs is for the DAP developer. In quantum physics, we learned that particles like electrons don't always behave as particles. They behave as either waves or particles, depending on whether or not they are being observed. That's similar in some ways to Rex and SEOs. Rex and SEOs are a way of taking the same set of EOS tokens and putting them to work in different ways. You still need the base EOS token, which would be like the electron, but depending on your persona and what you want out of EOS, you can use this EOS particle in different ways. EOS holders, the investors, will want to exchange their EOS tokens for Rex tokens. The Rex tokens are setups that the longer you hold them, the more EOS you accumulate. For example, if you exchange 100 EOS for 100 Rex, when you go to cash out by exchanging your 100 Rex back for EOS, you'll get more EOS returned. For example, maybe 105 EOS. It can't go the other way. There's no risk of getting fewer EOS back for your 100 Rex. From the DAP developer's side, they will be able to use their EOS to rent CPU and net for 30 days. Once the 30 days is up, they do not get those EOS tokens back. This is a major paradigm shift from the initial vision of EOS. The initial vision was that just by holding EOS, you were guaranteed access to a certain amount of CPU and net. Under this new proposal, holding a loan will not give you access to any of these resources. You need to make regular payments of EOS tokens every 30 days to continue accessing these resources. So why the change from the initial vision? It goes back to what we were just talking about with the two personas with different use cases. Basically, the initial vision would cause the majority of network resources to be locked up in accounts that had no intention of ever utilizing those resources, the investor accounts. The ByteMaster's proposal here allows us to cater towards each type of account, as well as the more complex cases where a single account would be partially for investment and partially for renting network resources. So let's take a look now at how the renting side works. SEOs is short for staked EOS, SEOs. We already have the concept of staking EOS in a single account as a way to access network resources. SEOs represents those staked tokens in a similar way. 
It's just that these SEOs can move around freely and can be utilized by other accounts besides the one that initially staked those EOS. The way it works is SEOs are created when holders convert their EOS for Rex. The same amount of SEOs are created one for one for each EOS token converted to Rex. Those SEOs go into a pool that represents all the CPU and net available for the EOS network. The way DAP developers get access to the actual CPU and net that they need to run their applications is they first procure some of that SEOs. So they would give a few EOS, which they won't get back, and in return for those few EOS, they get in return several times over the amount of SEOs. And they can use this SEOs for 30 days and treat it for, for CPU and net. The theory here is that this rental model will end up being much more affordable for DAP developers. Instead of needing, say, $100,000 worth of EOS in their account to launch their DAP, they would just need a few EOS tokens to procure 30 days worth of resources, similar to buying a home versus renting a home. This lowers the barrier to entry, opening up EOS for bootstrapping entrepreneurs who, work, who, are working, who aren't working with a big budget. This model also ensures that network resources are not locked up for purely speculative purposes. The SEOs dynamics are designed to keep resources available for those who truly need them the DAP developers, and the trading fees that accumulate uh, throughout this cycle ensure a steady increase in the value for the Rex token holders. Keep in mind that this is just a proposal at the moment and will need to be approved by token holders before being implemented. One more thing to note that Dan included in his proposal was that in order to convert EOS to Rex, you would be required to vote for at least 21 block producers. This would help with the voter turnout issue, which has been fairly low but it also has some similarities with the inverse weighted voting approach being implemented by Telos. If the whales out there or anybody else want to earn extra EOS by way of converting to Rex, they would have to spread their vote out among at least 21 block producers. This would make it less likely for, any, for anybody in as an investor to put all their voting power behind a single block producer, because doing so would disqualify them from owning Rex. On to governance news. Work is underway to get the referendum contract functionality in place. This will allow the EOS community to make proposed changes to the Constitution, vote on them, and ultimately change the Constitution. As we discussed in previous episodes, this is, a, this is crucial to the health of the ecosystem. Currently, we are living with an interim Constitution, and we have no way of ratifying the proposed changes that ByteMaster made in his intent of code as law post nor any other community proposed referendums until we get this functionality in place. The other thing being discussed is in relation to the worker proposal system. The worker proposal system is accumulating a massive amount of capital at a rate of about $400 million a year. People are discussing the idea of getting rid of the worker proposal system entirely and burning those, the existing funds in that account. This would essentially be deflationary and would benefit all EOS token holders. The reason for dropping the worker proposal system is the threat of these funds being abused. Whale voters could potentially vote themselves bogus contracts. There's not enough protection mechanisms in place yet to, to counter this. We are early in these discussions and nothing is final yet. We'll report further on this in future episodes. In EOS events, a few days ago on August 4th and 5th, an EOS hackathon was held in Sydney, Australia. The challenge was to create a DAP on EOS that empowers the public to play a role in sustaining environments in the, for the future. First prize went to SmartPress, which built a web app geared towards making it easy for non-technical people to create smart contracts. Second prize went to GreenKeep, a supply chain management app. And third prize to TokenTree, which gamifies the fight against deforestation by nurturing and tracking tree life cycles. There is a virtual conference being held on August 14th and 15th. This is a 24-hour webcast where there will be block producers speaking and Thomas Cox is scheduled to speak as well. This could be a good option for anyone looking to attend a conference but where your travel budget is light. This event is being organized by 100X, EOS Sys, EOS Canon, EOS Go, Meet.1, and Tulip. The next big in-person event is an EOS Hackathon in London on September 22nd and 23rd. If there's any other upcoming events that you want to promote, Please ping us on Twitter so we can add them in, into our future episodes. Our Twitter handle is at EOS Weekly. In DAP news, Metapedia announced in a blog post on August 7th 
that they were moving from Ethereum to EOS. Many of us in the EOS community have been expecting to see a trend like this, with projects that were planning to launch in Ethereum where they see the advantages of EOS, namely speed, cost, and scalability. Metapedia is a blockchain medical tourism platform, and you can find more info on them at metapedia.io. Chintai is planning an August 21st launch. If you caught our special uh, edition last week where we covered the top 10 most unique block producer projects, Chintai was in our number one spot. Chintai is a token leasing platform enabling token holders to rent out their EOS resources. What will be interesting here is how Chintai works alongside the new Rex model that Dan Larimer proposed, being that these are competing solutions to the same problem. Another dApp coming soon is the Challenge dApp. This is an airdrop that went out a few weeks ago, and it's the same project uh, by Kent from EOS San Diego, which is a YouTube channel. Kent announced in a recent video that they should have an early version of the app available in August. These will be some of the first live dApps on EOS. So far, we mainly have games like Crypto Wizards or Monster EOS and utilities like wallets or block explorers. So it'll be very exciting to see some actual dApps going live this month and going forward. And that brings us to our EOS featured project of the week. More and more people are becoming cognizant of the fact that when it comes to social networking sites, you are the product. The most prevalent recent scandal was Cambridge Analytica, which brought to light that Facebook wasn't making its billion, billions just through advertisements. They seem to have had a profitable side gig selling user data to anyone willing to pay for it. You, the user, currently have little to no control over where your data goes once you upload it to one of these sites. You are putting your trust in these corporations, which are incentivized only by profit. Corporations that are constantly testing the limits as to how much the end user is willing to tolerate when it comes to exploiting their data. Meanwhile, you, the content creator, make zero profit from all the content you provide. This is not the model that's going to prevail in the long run. Blockchain makes it possible to introduce a new model. And there's a project positioned with the right values and the right talent to lead us into the next generation of social networking and data sharing in general. And that project is called Lumios. Lumios is an extremely exciting project. We could classify Lumios as a dApp, a decentralized application, but it's actually more than, more than a dApp. It's more like a decentralized platform and infrastructure, providing the data layer on top of EOS where, upon which other dApps can be built. Similar to how Steemit works, where you can earn Steam tokens for creating content, Lumios offers the Loom token, L-U-M-E, where the more followers you have and the higher quality content you create, the more Loom you can earn. Imagine Facebook, where you get paid for the content you upload. This is the direction we're headed with projects like Lumios. But not only does Lumios offer the ability to profit from your content, it gives you, the user, complete control over your data. When we get to the point where multiple dApps are built on top of Lumios, you will be able to control at a granular level what is shared out to each dApp versus what is kept private. In the short term, Lumios is going to focus on polling, similar to the iRespo project that we featured a few weeks ago. You will, you will be able to earn Loom by participating in polls and analysts will pay Loom to access the results. But after that, Lumios plans to expand out to become a more general purpose infrastructure for data sharing. One interesting thing to note is that Lumios evaluated the Telos blockchain and wrote a very positive blog post about the advantages of building on top of Telos versus the EOS mainnet. Now, this was before the recent proposal by Dan Larimer to move towards the rental model we just described with Rex. It will be very interesting to see which blockchain Lumios goes with when they launch. Lumios is planning an airdrop for the first 10,000 platform signups. Check out their website for more information, lumios.io. Congratulations to Lumios for being featured this week's EOS Project of the Week. If you would like to nominate a great EOS project to be recognized here, please ping us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at EOS Weekly. And that's it for this week's episode of EOS Weekly. Please like and subscribe if you found this content informative and you want to continue to stay current on EOS as this revolution unfolds. Thanks, and we'll see you next week right here on EOS Weekly.